And hello, friends. Welcome to Tabletop Tonight, the mid-afternoon edition. Welcome, Raiders from Rottle Run Through. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Raid, raid, raid. You're going to get your special um, Twitch points for the raid uh, for coming on over. You get an additional couple of hundred, I think, for any time you join a raid. So thank you for joining me. I just got done talking uh, to Rottle. We just did the r, &R show, and I want to thank you all for uh, joining me here. What I'm doing today is... I'm just going to give you a quick overview of a new game on Kickstarter right now called Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. Uh, this was uh, something that I did a live stream on this channel here last night with my buddy Daryl. We played a two-player run-through of it, and I really enjoyed it. And it's ready to hit its funding goal. I'm going to drop the uh, link in chat right now. Uh, there it is. Uh, go check out the link. You can um, sign up for I mean, you can back it there or just get more info. It's already a, a click. I mean, it's already met its goal and crushed it, I believe. I'm, you know, I'm going to click on it right now. They were asking for $20,000. they are already almost at $30,000. And it launched this morning. So congrats to the team over there, uh, Dan and uh, Mari Poso Games. I want to congratulate them for the success. Uh, Lizzie Gav is here. Thank you for the first time. Uh, chat Lizzie, it's good to see you. And we're getting a second raid. So not only the Rotto raid, now we've got Lusa Palooza as well. Thank you, David Ilka. Hope you're well. You know, I got to get the raid helmet uh, because if you're the first time, if you're for here for the first time, I do analog alerts, folks. And one of them is the raid helmet that Michelle made for me back in 2020. But it's been updated a couple of times for 2021 and 2022. As you can see here, nothing but the most high-tech stuff here on the show. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Your, the chat is blowing up right now. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to get to uh, this in just a second. Again, that's my hand is off to you all, friends. So thank you, everyone from Lusa Palooza and also from uh, Ronald Runs Through. Hey, Foxy One, yes, go Bruins. I did not actually go to UCLA, but my stepdaughter graduated from UCLA. I went to UC Santa Barbara, so I have that um, UC connection. Uh, my stepdaughter also went to UC Santa Barbara. Um, greatest school on uh, the face of the earth, but uh, you know, UCLA is not a bad place as well. But did you know UC Santa Barbara is the only uh, school in the entire US that has its own beach? Not even the University of Hawaii has its own beach. If you go to University of Hawaii, they're like a couple of miles away. UC Santa Barbara has a lagoon and a lake, uh, I mean, and a beach right there. You walk down from campus, most beautiful place on earth. Go Gauchos. Uh, but th I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to control, I'm not going to uh, recruit. I'm always in recruit mode for UC Santa Barbara, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do today is take a look at Trailblazer. This is the John Muir Trail uh, game from uh, Monty Pulsa Games designer Dan Rice. If you recognize the yard, I don't know if you do. But this is Andrew Bosley, uh, the uh, person behind Tapestry, uh, Everdale, and all kinds of great games. Uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, it's like the game if you played Parks or Trails from Keymaster. I, I've been saying it's similar to that in the fact that you're you know cruising along, you know, doing the hiking and backpacking stuff. But I feel like it has a little more strategic depth to the game. Um, you have a, a few more things going on. It's more of a resource management a worker placement game uh, with some set collection as well at the end. So what I'm going to do is real quick, take a quick look at chat. Y'all are blowing up my chat. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this is great for the middle of uh, a Tuesday. Uh, good to see everyone here. Board Game Feast, 
Kabuki Kid, Brenner, uh, Forest of Glass. Again, I've seen a bu I saw y'all a bunch of y'all in a chat during the R and R show. Thank you. so thanks for taking the ride over here. Party on dudes, Porthane, Bjorn the Bold, Thing Four One Three. Uh, the Rare Norb is here already. Uh, Rare Norb says, already backed this game uh, at even without seeing one gameplay video. You know, I've actually heard that from a few people, uh, Rare Norb, so that's cool that, um, you know, the game, you know, it's it's resonating with a lot of people already, so that's great. I uh, said hello to Lizzie already. Thank you, Lizzie. Mob Gamer as well. Good to see you. Uh, a Foxy, Bracket Lisa, Daniel. Hey, Daniel, good to see you. Uh, one Tar, much love to One Tar. Eurovision, yay. Win the Webmasters here. Kabuki Kid, we said hello to. Duchess, hi, Duchess. Good to see you as well. Uh, we got first time chatters. We got all kinds of people. Uh, Forest of Glass, yes. UCSB for the win. Um, I am going to highlight that. I may just leave that here the entire time. Do do I do that? Um, maybe I will. Who, who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Always got love for my fellow gauchos. Um, <laughs> Someone said something about Tom Bosley. That, that was hilarious. Oh, wait. Uh, Forest of Glass, University of Seattle. Right on Lake Washington. Lake beaches don't count, I suppose. Fair enough. Oh yeah. Now th yeah, there are yeah there are um, schools that do have lakes, but we're talking about beaches specifically in that case. Uh, every college is a party college. I, I'd, I'd probably have to agree with that for the most part. Uh, thank you, Rado. Yeah, you know uh, I want to thank Rado. He's the one that always he's helped me so much improve my camera settings and making things look bright and pop on screen. So uh, kudos to you, friend. Um, Forest of Glass, this is a great question. I need to put this up here. Forest of Glass asked, um, shoot, I just lost it. Ruel, whoa, do, 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 do. Ruel, how does it do uh, with your color differences? Yeah, for those of you that don't know, I'm red, green, colorblind. This game, no problems whatsoever. And there are different icons for certain things. Um, and uh, those are easily discernible. So again, for my eyes, they're, they're fine. Uh, color blindness is a very different for different folks. So depending on what um, uh, vision issues you have, it may be different for you. But hey, um, give me just a second. I need to step back right real quick. There's something, I, I'm getting a phone call right now. So if you want to stick around, please do. I'm going to look at this game real quick in just a minute. And hey, we're back. Uh, that was a quick phone call. Thankfully, no, nothing important. So we're just going to get back here uh, to the game. I'm going to show the game right here. So on Trailblazer, what you're doing, you and I are going to be hiking along the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Uh, we're starting here at Happy Isles, and then we're going to make our way eventually to Whitney Portal. Now, I'm not going to play the entire game. I'm just going to Give you some turns to give you an overall feel for it um we'll take a quick look here this is the player board so each player is going to get a player board which has resources we have natural resources like earth wind and fire and water see what i did there um, you're also gonna get personal uh, personal resources or uh, water uh, water a bottle uh food and so forth you also have a backpack every player has a backpack and in this backpack is going to go uh different items such as binoculars um a hammock uh, uh, hiking sticks and so forth. And those you're gonna place here. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So we have those. Uh, these are the tracks uh, tokens or your little walking boots. You're gonna use these, these are basically your workers. Uh, so you're gonna go to the different spots to take the actions, like any work, good worker placement game. I uh, wanted to point out this thing. This is really cool. I like this. Each one of us, each player is gonna get a different map pack. Uh, I've been randomly selected to get map pack A, and what that does is going to tell you exactly what resources you need to get to each um, uh, section of the map here. So starting at Happy Isles, I'm the yellow player. To go to section one, I'm going to need a turn in an earth, okay, one of these tokens here. Whereas my buddy here, uh, or the other player, let's say Michelle, in her map pack, and she's going to have to turn in a fire token or, you know, to get to that one, okay. 
So the way the turns work, it's, uh, again, standard worker placement. What you're going to do first, though, is resolve the weather. So out of this stack of random weather tokens, hey, the first day, it's a nice and sunny day, so no additional things are happening. Uh, there are some tokens, for instance, this one, if you happen to run into a rainstorm on, say, day two, so what that does is add another element that you'll have to pay or a resource you have to use to get to the next uh, section. So in this case, if this was day one with a, a rain token here, I would have to pay a earth and a fire, okay, to get to that one. So this gives you additional resources that you have to do. But most of them are going to be sunny or cloudy days that don't give you additional stuff. But some of them do will uh, do that. So thankfully, nothing on this turn. Uh, so what I'm going to do, there are several places I can go. I can get resources here. I can also get field guide cards here. So the field guide cards are uh, different things that you can use for set collection at the end of the game. So if I go here, let's say I go here. I have to pay two water. I pay, take two water out of here. And now I have the Jeffrey Pine. And what the Jeffrey Pine says is, uh, you, this is the stuff you're going to get, and then this uh, item here. And you know what? Uh, let me see if I have my camera set up here. I do. Oh, I didn't really um, figure in for the green screen effect. But anyways, uh, the leftmost part, that's your backpack. That you're going to either add that item or activate it. You're going to get a, your choice or resource here. And then this is for the set collection at the end. There are five different types of um, items. This one is a tree. You also have flowers, animals, and so forth. For each collect, uh, um, for each set that you collect, you get points based on it at the end of the game. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take my binoculars and place it in my backpack, like so. There it is. And you'll notice here, for each row that you complete, uh, there are 12 items. For each set of three, you're going to get something. So in this case, I'll get a natural resource if I complete that, and so forth. Okay, so this goes in. Um, I would move this. Now I can either take a fire... Or I can take um, another item. This is, let me see, this icon means uh, I can take a patch. Ooh, I'm going to do that. So not only did I get uh, my binoculars, I'm going to take a patch. And those patches are, uh, each player gets three patches. You can uh, take these. And what you want to do is look along the path here. These are randomly placed on well, some of the board here. So I know on section seven, I'm going to need this patch, patch here, which is the leave no trace patch. I can get that for free right now, and guess what, folks? I'm going to do it. So thanks to me going to the field guy card for the Jeffrey Pine, uh, I've got that patch. So I'm just going to score this at the end of the game now, and then that's the end of my turn. Uh, now, so I've done that. Um, my worker is here, or my tracks. So now it's Michelle's turn, and what she's going to do is um, look at her board here what can she do uh she's gonna take her little item here and you know what she's gonna go a walking so a walking we go as you'll notice here there are only four spots to walk that means for every day you can only do the walk action or the hike action once and here's the thing there are 12 days folks there's only 12 days to um get to mount whitney so 10 this is 10 spots out of the 12 days you're gonna have to take at least one uh action to walk or else, here's the big thing. If you do not make it down to the Whitney portal right here, Mount Whitney, you cannot win the game. You have to get there. If you, do, you know, that's important. I'm going to emphasize this. You have to get to Mount Whitney. If you do not, you lose. So keep walking, folks. Keep walking every day. It's good medical advice as well, right? So if you don't get there, you automatically lose the game. So you got to be careful. So Michelle, she's going to get a head start. She's going to start walking. So her character is this one here. Uh, according to her map guide, she needs to pay a fire. Which she does here. Back to the general supply. Boom. And uh, that's it. She is already one step ahead. Now, that's the thing. You can only walk because, you know, these are this is a long hike. This is like miles and miles of, uh, you know, terrain. You can't hike more than one day in backpack. So she's there. I'm there. I'll probably have to follow her along. But what can I do? There are other field guide cards I can do. I can go here, a destination. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe my destiny is to go over here. But no, not yet. I need some more resources. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to this little riverbed here. And hey, I'm going to make sure I'm well hydrated. And one, two, three, four. So I got four of these. It says here on the board how many you get. Uh, your max on your uh, player board, you're going to have 12 natural resources. I've got four. I've got eight right now. So I'm well within range. I am safe. Okay. So now it's back to Michelle. She'll take her turn. 
and she's looking like let's see she's got wind she's got a couple of uh, waters and she's got earth as well uh what she's gonna do is she's gonna go explore it a little bit so michelle places her token there uh she's gonna go exploring and you'll notice here on the side here we have these destination cards destinations uh that's what you do when you explore you're gonna it's uh, similar in the field guys but also a little different i'll tell you why right here so what michelle's gonna do she's gonna pay a water and a wind to get this uh they go back on the supply to get this destination card and what she does she unlocks the swiss uh army knife she adds that to her backpack here and then she gets one victory point so she just i think it's off camera the little victory point thing and then she's going to do this. This is what's really neat. So this item here, this uh, symbol, and I'll show it on my board because I, I, I got it zoomed in on mine. Right here, this says draw two cards and play one and your hand size is now four. So I didn't talk about the beginning. Your hand size is three. And what these are, these are the smaller trail cards, which is this deck of cards. And what are you going to do? Uh, actually, there's four. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do this thing at the start. Okay, the, at the start of each round, you're going to draw one and play one out of your hand, which I forgot to do. I'll, I'll make that up in just a second. So what Michelle's doing, she's got her cards here, and you'll notice each of these cards is positive. You're going to get something in your backpack, and you're going to get some resources, or a resource, or a personal, or a choice. Lots of co positive stuff in the trail cards. So I'm, speaking of hydrate, I'm going to hydrate real quick. And what we're going to do next is uh continue michelle's turn here uh, she is taking uh, this action she uh explored this gets refilled and she's got her point and then she's going to do this action down here which on my player board you can see here she's drawing two oops one two playing one uh let's see uh michelle you know michelle is a big fan of the hammock she loves hammocks I can tell you all about the hammock cafe we went to in Japan many years ago. One of our all-time favorite places in the world. I'll save that story for another time. Uh, so she gets the hammock into her backpack. So a hammock. So she's got two items in her backpack. And she gets a wind. So she basically gets the wind back that she paid uh, earlier in the round. That goes into there. And then she just discards this in the discard pile. Okay. And now she has a four-card limit. I have three cards. Uh, that's the end of her turn. I've got one final worker here. Um, and let's see. So I've done that. I've done that. Um, I probably want to hike. Yeah, I, I need to hike because I don't want to get stuck here. So for me to go up, I look on my little map guide here. I need one earth or a tree. Uh, and I pay that to the supply. And then this is going to go move up here. Okay. And as you can see, you can, you can totally look forward, uh, ahead. So I already know in a uh, section two, I need a wind and a tree or earth section three is fire so we each have the same uh things in our uh, little map guides here our map packs but they're in different order so we're going to be paying different things so michelle paid fire the next one she only has to pay a water and so forth cool cool, cool. all right so i have um joined her on the trail there now it's back to michelle uh let's see what she's going to do uh, she's going to go, you know, she wants to get in on uh, this game as well. She doesn't want me to get too many field guide cards. Uh, so what she's going to do is go right here. Uh, she's going to pay one water and one earth or a tree to select the Quaking Aspen. Now the Quaking Aspen, she gets to use her uh, hammock. The reason, Now she's already placed her hammock here. Whenever you get a symbol that you already have here, instead of adding it to your backpack, backpack you get to use it. So how do you how do you use something in your in your backpack? Glad you asked, Ruel. What you do is the matching icon that you've done there. You just go to the this part of the board, the elevation chart, and you move up a space. So we both start off the elevation chart. Michelle is now uh, this is a little tent. She's at one. I'm still at zero. And as you can see here, as you go up the elevation chart, you get cool stuff. So here, elevation uh, section number three is you get a choice of resource. Uh, five. Uh, the sixth spot is important. You get another worker or another tracks token, as they call it. You go up here. You're gonna get a point scoring token. It's um, gosh, I forget the name of it. Uh, these arrowheads. You're gonna get one of these, and you're gonna score these personally. So if Michelle, you can choose anyone. Let's say Michelle chose this one. She's gonna get one point for each tree, which, uh, as you notice here, she got a tree already, so she's gonna get a point max of up to five that's when you get down to these spots here you get the arrowhead you'll get a second worker here so you're gonna you can have up to 
total of five workers you get here and then you'll get uh points whoever's the first one here um which you can't see you'll get seven points for being the first to rush to, uh to make the uh uh elevation chart uh completed likewise if whoever's the first to get to mount whitney they'll get five points and they'll get this token medallion that reminds you get you get points at the end um you'll also notice here on this part of the board uh there is another uh arrowhead it's a jumbo one here uh two points for each backpack patch so any time you have uh, any every backpack patch you have you'll get points we both score those that this is uh universal this is for me and michelle however these here these arrowheads are only for whoever completes the elevation chart okay cool 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 um i want to thank uh, everyone for hanging out with me i'm this is basically turn number one of the game, folks, and I've explained everything you need to know, almost everything you need to know about the game. There's still some other uh, things. That, you know, I'll do some cleanup. So let's do some cleanup, shall we? So during the sunset phase, here's the thing. Just like y'all remember Stone Age, y'all remember Ag Agricola, any type of game you have to feed and uh, hydrate. So on your player board, you must spend one food and one water bottle. Okay, if you don't have water bottle, you can take uh, two natural water tokens to, you know, give yourself a drink there. So Michelle and I are both doing that. And then uh, we get our workers back or attract tokens. Those go back to our boards. So boom, 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 boom. And then we're going to refill the field guide cards. So field guides. Yes. Uh, and then whoever is the first player, I was the first player. Uh, I passed this over to Michelle. Now there is one thing you could become the first player by going up there for first light. I don't know if you can see that token. It's way out here. You place a worker there, right? You just grab the token, place a worker there. That means you're going to get this. Now, after every round that someone does not take this, we're going to add a water to it. Okay. So it's going to incentivize you later, uh, to go first. Uh, so after this round, we've added one water. Uh, there and um, last night uh, when Daryl and I played, yeah, we didn't really touch that until round three, round three or four. That's when we started fighting over it. Um, really cool, really cool uh, thing about this game is you know getting that player order. So this goes to Michelle, and then <clears throat> we pass that around. Now I'm going to start the next turn. I'm not going to go through the entire turn, but what I'm going to do is show you what we do. So we draw a card each. Okay, first we resolve the weather. So this weather, let's see. Ah, it's rainy. So, on day two of our trek, anytime we move up to the next space, in this case, space number two, we have to pay an additional fire. So, looking up my map, map pack, section two, wow, so I got to pay three. It's going to be tough for me to uh, tr uh, hike this turn. So, I need to pay a earth, a wind. Hey, I need to pay an earth, wind, and a fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was not planned, I swear. Uh, Michelle's, however, she needs to pay a water and a fire. A little water and fire there for her. Now, this is the sun, uh, sunrise phase that we're doing. I'm just going to complete this real quick. So what we also do, we've drawn a card and we're going to play one. We draw one trail card and we play one. So Michelle, uh, what she's going to do, look at this. She's going to play Listen to a Songbird. Listen to a songbird, friends. Uh, she gets a hammock, but she already has the hammock here, so she gets to activate it and move it there. So she's one step closer to getting a free resource. Speaking of free resources, she gets a wind as well. And then we just discard that there. Uh, now it's my turn for the sunrise phase. Um, ooh. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to do this here. Uh, I'm going to get a, uh, a fishing rod okay because you know i like fish and i need to eat so i'm gonna place that on my backpack i have now completed this so i'm gonna get any one natural resource of my choice the natural resources are earth wind and fire and uh water <laughs> so i get one of my choice uh, i'll tell you what i'm gonna get a so i have a fire i have a tr uh, tree i'm gonna get another tree and then i'm going to get two waters as well all right those are on the player board that's my turn. I've filled up these three. Now, for if you want to uh, refill your food, water bottle, uh, sleep, or endurance, you have to go to the High Sierra Lodge. Now, that is not available yet, folks. You have to either uh, have nine items to get unlock the lodge, or you have to get to Section 4 to unlock this lodge. So the food is gonna get scarce real quick. And if you cannot feed or um, uh, give yourself water at the end of the round, you get one of these bad boys, the hardship tokens. 
You do not want these. I'm going to tell you right now. One hardship token at the end of the game, you're going to lose four points. Two, you're going to lose nine points. Three, I think it's 16, so it's exponentially bad. So if you happen to uh, gather these uh, during the early parts of the game, once you unlock the lodge, you can go here. Uh, these spots are not blocked, so any number of players can go here. You can go here and get rid of one of these. So you definitely want to be using that. Here, you're going to get three food, two water, and so forth. And um, that is pretty much the game. Now, as far as end game scoring, uh, you're going to score your field guide cards. So as these sets are complete, you know, you're going to get like a full set. Let's say I had a, a tree, a flower, a river, and a bear. That's four. You're going to get a certain amount of points there for that. And I could just show you real, real quick here. So hardship tokens, look at that. If you have four of those, minus 25. That is not good. Uh, field guide card sets, these are the five different symbols for every set of five unique seven points uh the golden arrowhead bonus tile which is this and in this game it would be for each backpack patch you get two points max of six points uh the journey bonus heads as you unlock those here on your elevation chart uh, again this here uh let's see if i can zoom in uh this is a, a journey a bonus head uh arrowhead you'll get to select one of these and you score that personally that's not for everyone this is for everyone these are private okay uh, and also the medallions. So if you are the first one to get the Whitney, you get this. Uh, if you're the first one, this is really cool. As you go to the destination, like Michelle did, uh, she was able so on hers. Actually, I forgot to put this on her board. Once she did this one, um, based on the symbol she had, that symbol there, she got to do that ability. It's only one time per game uh, you get to do these abilities. So if you unlock all four of them like this, by getting the right destination cards, you're going to get five points, but the first person is also going to get this orchid. I think it's an orchid. I forget what it's called. Um, anyways, this flower, that's going to be worth points at the end of the game as well. Also, whoever gets the um, first player token gets points, and who, if anyone has that, uh, the first light token there, you'll get points as well. Uh, you add it all up, and the uh, player with the most points wins. Friends! That is your quick overview and sample gameplay of Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. It is now available on Kickstarter. I have dropped the link in chat right there. Speaking of chat, I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes and I'm going to go uh, take a late lunch. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I'm really hyped about this game. I think it's really good. Um, again, full disclosure, I was paid to do the video last night. But they didn't know I was going to do this um, live stream today. You know, I just wanted to uh, shout out the game. So... Let's see. I'm going to check in chat for a few minutes, then we will get going. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, James asked the very important question, and this is so true. How can you be in a hammock without a pug, right? <laughs> Thank you, James. Yeah, we have two pugs, and I don't know if they'd, they they would fit in a uh, hammock, uh, but it would be the best hammock ever with two pugs on it. Uh, also, I'm going to raid someone else right after this, so uh, stick around, folks, so you get more channel points. Um, Pog, like I do, too. Like a lot of outdoorsy games, the art, it's just really peaceful to me. And I honestly don't get out much. Uh, I should get out more and exercise more, but um, I don't. But this, maybe this will be the, um, maybe will this be an inspiration for me to actually go see the, the great outdoors a little more than I do. Gonna go back in here. Could we kid, thanks for hanging out. Good to see you here. Um... John Muir was one of the good guys, apparently. Yeah, I don't know the history of John Muir, so... Um, yes, A, Foxy, I need Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm, I'm so glad you got that there. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Rain. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, oh, hi, Panda. Uh, oh, Amanda's saying uh, check the redemptions. I did not check. Oh, okay, we need a redemption, a Bruno walk. Folks, you, we got uh, channel points here, the Bruno points, our long lost pug Bruno. We love him so much and we're gonna take him away. I'm gonna take him for a walk. There he is walking. Look at that walk. Yeah, you know what's funny? Michelle and I were talking like Bruno was so much bigger than our pugs that we have now. So uh, he was he was a chunky boy <laughs> and we have, you know, Bruno, our Meeple and Mookie, there's one and a half and two years old respectively. And they are tiny compared to Bruno. Bruno was a, a big boy. Thanks for the hydrate as well, Amanda. Appreciate it. I'm going to get out of here though, folks. Um, I'm, yeah, everyone here, thank you so much for joining me for this quick overview of uh, the John Muir game. Uh, the uh, Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. Again, on Kickstarter right now, you have the link. Uh, you know what to do. 
Um, I want to thank you all again for hanging out with me. I, I truly do appreciate it. Especially after the R&R &R show. I had a good time with Rado talking about our top 100 games. And what we're going to do now is pass on the love. I'm going to uh, raid someone right now and then so I can go get my late lunch. And uh, yeah, force love. Much love. Much love, everybody. Thank you, Julia. Good to see you. Uh, thanks, Bing. Thank you, Kabuki. Uh, let's see who is on here. Who's playing board games? Oh, okay. We've got, uh, I haven't raided Love Thy Nerd in a while. Thank you, Sir Bearsworth. Uh, let's raid um, these folks. Is they're playing board games. I don't know what board games they're playing right now, but we shall find out. Let me get the raid uh, going and ch -ch -ch -ch. Love Thy Nerd. Yeah, they do all kinds of nerdy stuff, all kinds of good nerdy stuff. Folks, uh, stick in, stick around for the raid and we'll get that going. Thank you again. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching the r, &R Show. Thanks for watching Tabletop tonight. Um, I will be back maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, maybe back tonight. Who knows? Um, we. I just My schedule is like whenever I feel like uh, streaming. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, stick around for the raid. Bye, everybody. Oh, I guess I got to press this button. <laughs> Bye, everybody.